cool. We're introducing our new segment, The Chaos of War. All right, welcome back. This is our segment, The Chaos of War, where we talk about meta analysis a little bit. We talk about some breakdowns from tournaments, all sorts of fun stuff that will you'll probably be seeing. With Gen Con on the horizon, I really wanted to actually have a conversation tonight about some of the top decks. And good news, bad news situation. Good news is we have some of the decks. Bad news is we don't have everything. And I could go through the discords and probably pull out ones that I believe are the correct decks, but they just, it seems kind of silly. And like, this is weird compared to like what we had in X-Wing. We had all this information just like at hand. So it's, it really bothers me. We don't, and that only certain areas are getting this information and it's not just like a public forum like we used to have, but we do have a couple of the decks um, and we could, we could actually kind of talk a little bit about uh, some of these other decks too. So, Alex, for the Baltimore 1K for the Friday, what decks came out in the top eight? On the top eight, uh, we have two green Palpatines. Always lovely to see. We got a a green yellow Han, a blue red Han, a uh, mono yellow Boba. Sorry, a third green Han or a green Palp? Did I miss that? Yep, yep, yep. I missed that. Okay, well, yeah, three green Palps. That's how you do it. Uh, a green Luke and another green Luke. So out of the top eight, um, two of them don't have green. <laughs> yep, that's crazy, right? <laughs> that's that's a lot. That's big. And then it looks like we have Pelp Green versus Luke. Pelp Green won. And then we have Green Han versus green pelp and green han beat green pelp and then in the finals of course we had green pelp versus green han and green han won so why don't alex what is this first place deck and this one i believe is the official deck that was posted um i know it has my name on it but i had to get a deck image and that was the only way to get it so i did not create this deck by any way shape or form folks this is not my my (laughs) deck doing i do wonder how what the green palps were built because we don't really have that. I'm very curious. They were the they were very similar to the ones that we had last week. Hmm. The one we went over last week that the thread that I'm in in that Discord they are very similar to that. That's a shame. Maybe that's why they lost. <laughs> so we have this uh, yellow green Han here. It's got triple Greedo, just one timely intervention, double hot shot blaster. Uh, you know you're smuggling it out because it's yellow. Uh, when you smuggle it out. One Enticing Reward, two Confiscates, one Leia, two Spark of Rebellion, one Spark of Hope, triple Cloud Rider, double Echo Base Defender, triple Resupply, triple of the uh, three-cost Falcon, double Waylay, triple DJ, triple Tech, presumably to go with that DJ, uh, <laughs> double Bright Hope, one Cunning, one Kira, double Traitorous, one... General Recan, who I love, uh, triple U Wing, triple Han Unit, triple Home One, and then double Reinforcement Walker. In the side, you have the third Spark Rebellion, three Sindari Peacekeepers, uh, double of the uh, Ozatuck, another Kira, two Change of Heart, and the third Reinforcement Walker. Yeah, which is, I, I'm a little surprised only one Kira in the main, but I mean, I guess Kira is not super impactful. Like, but to me, it feels like it would be very good for this deck. You know, I mean, uh, you get hand knowledge, and <clears throat> if it, I mean, it's a uh, better statted regional governor that mm-hmm. doesn't really prevent the whole play. But if you're like, oh, I'm going against Green Han, do I just, or a Green Palp? Like, you can just call, hey, your syndicate lackeys or not your syndicate lackeys your uh enterprising lackeys now they cost three more or your overwhelming barrage more likely costs three more even if it's on their hand it's really kind of mess them up um this is i mean i've done a lot of green han it's really fun some of the one-offs i i understand but i feel like maybe consistency would be a little bit better like, do you really need the one-off conning? 
Conning's mm-hmm. good. You might want two. You might want none. I don't know. Just one off conning seems kind of strange to me, and one off enticing a reward. Yeah, that does seem weird. Uh, same thing with Riken. Like Riken, I think is a really good card, especially in this particular deck, and to only have just one copy of it, um, kind of feels strange. But I, then again, the other part of it is, you know, do they have more copies of those cards? Um, which, you know, that that could be the case. But um, but yeah, they, uh, they I'm did gonna... very well. JJ, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to just going to go on a limb here and say if you're playing in in a $40 a, a ticket tournament, you're not worried about what cards you got. Like at that point, you probably you how often are you going to go play in a $40 X-Wing tournament and just be like, "Well, I don't actually have this one ship." Oh wait, you didn't. You went and bought bloody ships before you went and played in a big tournament. So they there's specific reasons I'm sure they're choosing to do it. I don't know. I agree. I do not want. I, if you want cunning, take cunning, or just don't take cunning. I, I would rather have the cure. I think over the cunning, personally, in the long run. I understand, like having like you know some toolboxy stuff. I can actually understand the like one timely intervention too. Like that's you're probably gonna smuggle that out for whenever the time's right. But like you don't necessarily need a lot of them. Just like the one off Leia is kind of weird to me. I can kind of see one off Spark of Hope. I'd probably run to. Uh, but, you know, eh, eh. I mean, I also didn't win a 1K tournament, right? So. True. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would want the two Leia's and then like, or maybe moving Confiscates to the sideboard. But. Yeah, it's interesting that they have like Confiscate and that uh, like Bamboozle. I mm-hmm. guess it doesn't directly remove the upgrade. Um, but you can also pay for free if you discard a card. And it exhausts. Yeah. I don't know. I, I agree that's a that's a good choice too. So um so if we kind of go back up here, like like I said, the I'm guessing the pulp green is very similar to the ones we saw before. Uh I we could not get the guy to post his baby Han blue deck. Um it just <laughs> they're keeping it a secret, I guess, until I'm after hoping Gen it's Con. a Wookiee based deck. Yeah, me too. Um, I could see it not being a Wookiee base deck, but it would be fun. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move on to the Saturday. This is the 2K here. JJ, what were the top eight for this one? Uh, so we got a Sabine Green versus Mono Yellow Han, uh, which that uh, that deck did end up winning uh, there. The first seed uh, was Sabine Green versus the eight seed, which is a, a Kira with ECL, uh, which is a, a green uh, Kira Green deck, uh, which Sabine ended up winning that. Uh, Yan Han uh, Blue, uh, so it's a red blue Han and versus a pop green. And then uh, Sabine Green versus Boba Yellow, uh, which Sabine ended up coming up on top on there with Mono Yellow Han winning the event here. And uh, for this particular deck here, we got three copies of R2-D2, three Spark of the Rebellions, three C-3PO's, two A New Adventures, three Cloud Riders, uh, which are really, really nice for two-cost ambush, 3-1. Three, uh, they're really nice. Uh, three uh, Surprise Strikes. Uh, three copies of Ezra Bridger, three Millennium Falcons, three Bodies, three Waylays, three DJs, uh, three um, Tex. Uh, we got two Austin Tux, three Cunnings, two Kiras, three Cantina Bouncers, uh, two Millennium Falcons, and three Han Solo Ground Units. And then in the sideboard here, we got uh, showing a Grogu, which is great. Three copies of it. Uh, three copies of the uh, Mercenary um, Recruit. Uh, an additional Ozatuck, uh, two Felda Dragons, and one Syndicate Lackey. Uh, that uh, sin- that Felda Dragon probably there probably for those appearances of the uh, the big ones like a Crate Dragon, for instance, or uh, probably like a big capital ship. Always good to have on hand um, in case you end up facing off against one of those on another deck. Uh, but a lot of consistency here. Um, R2D2 and C3PO, just a classic combination to help you mill through your deck to get exactly what you need there. And uh, the rest is history. Uh, history. DJ, uh, I've been actually using a lot um, in my Han decks, and just that ability to deploy him from uh, from smuggle and then capturing your opponent's uh, resource, uh, super super fun. I like it a lot. It's a it's a really fun 
um, mechanic for what he provides to the, to the list. Yeah, this is almost exactly a uh, the yellow Han deck that I built at the beginning of the set. Except yeah. for I didn't have C-3PO, I had uh, just some more space units that keep a little bit more uh, you know, space kind of honest. But it's almost literally exactly the same deck. <laughs> so that's cool that it's uh, doing really well. Yeah. That's what I called my FU Han deck because it was just like hand ripping and resource dealing. So... So what I what I want to know, like the one thing I want to know, right, is, um, does the C three PO and the R two D two like, I got I, I get you got you got three of, you can technically play if you could get them both in your opening hand, you could play them both in your opening hand. Um, but the probability of that has got to be pretty low, right? And the question is, is like do they slow the deck down or is this, or are they just there? Like, are they really just there kind of as ancillaries or do they actually fuel your deck? I guess. Well, uh, this deck has 24, three drops. So that's like a really safe bet to yeah. call for C3PO. Even if you don't have R2D2. Uh, Cause like, you know, basically literally half your deck is just a three drop. Um, so like any, they're, sturdy at you know four health so they actually kind of stick around they outlive a cloud rider uh shot so they're not bad c3po is less good than r2d2 but he's not a a bad two drop in upon himself i guess it just seemed weird to me like so so, because obviously this deck is somewhat built to be like kind of a mirror to what i would call the boba yellow decks right like that's I don't, that's what this feels like. This feels like a yellow boba version of like a hero version of that. That's, that's what this kind of feels like, except for the R2D2 and C3PO. Those two just don't seem to fit in there. And I like how they have tech because everybody said tech wasn't going to be good. Alex. And, um, (laughs) yes, you did. You guys all made fun of me for having, wanting tech and everything. I just want tech and everything. Works with very particular decks, particularly with DJ, but like, anyways so, <laughs> yeah sure but so the question is like so so you do do you think that the the r2d2 and the three c3po are like very important to the deck then or is that something you can you could mess around with i mean because for example they don't have gamo guards in here and gamo guards like is something that it would provide sentinel and this deck has no real sentinel but it does you know so i i don't know that, that that's the question i have is like there's it, it feels a little bit weird because of that um Outside of being able to ramp to Han pretty quickly. I am curious about how this like handles like aggro decks. Mm-hmm. Just I mean you got like the cloud what like, cloud riders, which are nice, and you have some high health units with like Ezra, C three PO R two D two. But like I I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of I mean like I mean you trade with the aggro deck, sure, but uh, I don't I don't know. I mean, to be honest, you know, with with both R2 and C3PO at four health um, and you got three copies of Surprise Strike in there, um, they can pretty much kill any any low cost aggro uh, ground units that could get deployed for like Sabine decks. Um, and, you know, they're, they're cheap units. So you're you're relatively easy able to replace them with other units uh, fairly quickly there. And then on top of that, you know, once you start having Bodhi um, like play, uh, you can start uh, taking a look at your opponent's hand, discard cards and stuff and control exactly what they can play out there. And if you're uh, reducing your opponent to being able to play just one big card, uh, which you can waylay later on and, and or use cunning to exhaust it and stuff and just control the amount of cards that are getting played from your opponent's hand. Um, then you can kind of keep pace until you get Han out, so you get your Cantina bouncers out to help them uh, help you get those cards back into your opponent's hand, and just you know maintain the board state that way. Um, so it, there, there is some tech in there for you to kind of deal with some of that that aggro. Um, yeah, there's three of them. But, it's right there yeah. next to DJ. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just. Like C3PO and R2D2, they only got one attack. So like you're like relying on the surprise strike, and then that's just like mm, you kind of need that to kill things. I don't know. Uh, it's just also very light on space too. 
Yeah. I say that's the other thing. Like they must not have had a lot of space to go around. And I get that you could get that Azatuck out, you know, turn two. And I get you could get that Millennium Falcon out, you know, turn one. It's just, I don't know. So a lot of it just seems a little whatever. It maybe again, maybe there just wasn't like Tarkin space is the big one. There is a Bobus red space deck that KTOD, one of the guys for KTOD came up with that has been kind of going around and making the runs. Um, I played it. I it's okay. I didn't win as many games as I did with the Tarkin deck. We'll just put it that way. It's so like the Tarkin deck felt better uh, for what it was trying to do. But yes, I don't know. Maybe people just haven't gravitated enough towards space that that's it matters. Like half my local meta right now. <laughs> well, I think that's going to be the future, Alex. I think you're, I think they're ahead of the curve. I just think that that's the future is that people are going to be surprised by a lot more space stuff. Um, I mean, granted, like yeah. triple dark raid decks aren't like super, super difficult to deal with. Like, you know, once you just have some space sentinels and some sort of space present, it just has to like keep your deck building kind of honest. And this one has like seven space units, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, their, their max attack is four. And that's your higher end Falcon. Yeah. I don't know. It's a neat little deck. Um, again, I I feel I I feel that Syndicate Lackey would be a little bit better main board, and I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, I think obviously what they're trying to do is just build to that end game. I mean, the, the cunning does work very well with R two D two and C three P L though. Just as a like, they do genuinely can help force people to make decisions on if they want to kill those things or not because of the plus four. Um, I don't know. Uh, obviously, it feels almost like yellow is somewhat overly dominant right now, but we'll see. Really? All right. Huh. Yeah, we, we'll get to that slide in a minute. So, okay, the, the other one, the top four, uh, one of the top four decks that somebody sent me was uh, a, a green Sabine deck. So this is kind of the uh, an updated version of it. Uh, so they're running two Rebel Assaults, two of the Spec Force Specials. Soldiers, yeah. <clears throat> two Heroic Sacrifice, two of the Heroic Resolves, which I believe those cards are just like the Heroic Sacrifice to some extent, right? You pay the two and it like defeats that upgrade and does extra damage for the, that turn. And you get overwhelmed for what it's worth. <laughs> and you get overwhelmed, yep. So it's good at taking out Sentinels. Yep. Um, and then they have three of the Battlefield Marines, three A-Wings, three Sabines, Three of the Alliance X-Wings, two Ketsus, three Fighters for Freedom, three of the Red Threes, three for a cause, three of the Fleet Lieutenants, three Wing Leaders, three Cassians, three K2SOs, one Dark Saber, just one, so obviously not a complete Dark Saber deck, um, three Poes, and I believe I cut the bottom off, but I believe that's three Wreckers as well. Uh, they have si their sideboard was the Sandusky Peacekeepers, uh, two Fang Fighters, three of the Ewing Reinforcements, which I think we'll come back to that in a second because I have a question on that, and then two of the Wolves. Um, and they're obviously running the ECL Sabine. So uh, pretty similar to what we have kind of seen that with a few of the upgrade uh, things for it. The w only one Dark Saber is a little bit spicy. A lot of people are either going all in on that Dark Saber thing or um, not at all. So I can't tell you which one is better personally. I feel that not having to rely on an upgrade feels better, but I will tell you it's not fun when somebody puts down that stupid dark saber on Sabine. So especially with Pelp, like it's, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge uh, playing Pelp once they do that, unless you have like the Fang Fighters or Power it's Failure, escorts, yeah. yeah, or Escorts give it, I guess. Well, uh, that doesn't kill it, does it? No, it's four damage though. No. Yeah. You get Fair two enough. of them that kills. So, um, so you wearing reinforcement as a cyborg card. What is that? What is that there tech wise? Like, what are they using that? What are they teching that in for? I'm assuming just like hard control. Okay. Where your games are just going to go longer. You just drop you wing. Yeah. They super laser blast or something, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, fair enough. I guess I didn't know this. So I don't know this is green Sabine. I, anybody have any thoughts on it? It's interesting. They're still keeping with like the rebel theme, but I get it because, you know, you're pretty geared towards rebels. You got the rebel assault, the wing leaders, the fleet lieutenants. Uh, I, I love Cassian. 
uh, just in general uh, in this. Um, and it's also really, really good in Sabine deck like that, just being able to smuggle them out, um, surprise, and then do three damage out of nowhere. It's really good. And then, you know, ECLing out a Poe and a Wrecker is just not okay. <laughs> <laughs> this wrecker will just one shot literally every leader if it comes to that if you need to. Um with yeah. an ECL. And he's at overwhelm too, right? Right. Yeah. So he's gonna overwhelm everyone that's not Jabba if you're doing it to a leader. And uh I mean Poe is t- t- disgusting too. Um the Poe's on attack. Uh you discard a card, you do two damage to a base, so you're just swinging in for eight. You know, he closes the games out real fast, so it doesn't yep. matter. He doesn't have the rebel tag uh, too much. And I assume the dark saber. I'd probably run two, but I don't know what else you would cut. It's probably the first card I would cut, right? Um, and I guess yeah. having two in there might just mess up a little bit for a cause, even though it's the only one that doesn't have the hero tag. I don't think it messes it up enough that it matters. How about that? Yeah. I mean, because people before this, people were running more. They were running other cards that were just single pipped, and yeah, it didn't matter. But like, if you're going to cut a card for a second dark saber, I don't know what you'd cut. Probably heroic sacrifice. I'm not a huge fan of that card. I get that it's like more damage. If it's me, I'm cutting that stupid bland X-Wing that I absolutely despise, or a wing leader. I hate wing leader. I know why they use wing leaders. I just, I don't like it. it it's just, I don't know. It's not my thing. It's, really it's good because I play control. That's why. It's because we play control, and I know what happens. You, If you play a wing leader, for the most part, I can take care of whatever you put the two experience on. Unless it's a dark saber Sabine, then I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's exactly why you put the wheel in there is for Dark Saber Sabine. No, but yeah, I no, mean, they're not. They're, they're 100% not doing that, JJ. I mean, it does really. No, I, there's a lot of times that you just wing leader the Sabine. Um, yeah. But not a Dark Saber Sabine. Yeah, that's probably a little excessive. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I mean, if you really want that one big swing, right? <laughs> no, but I, I agree with you. The Alliance X Wing on there um, just feels weird. I mean, I get it's a cheap space unit on there, um, but for me, I would uh, I would like to have just a little bit more um, like event cards that I can kind of hit units behind. Um, behind a sentinel um or a little more sap- uh, a couple of more ambush units on on here but still it's a very solid deck uh overall and this this thing can push out quite a bit of damage really fast and it's very cheap so yeah i like the sideboard uh sindari as well because uh yeah. if you end up going against other sabines or other really heavy aggro uh generally they won't have that and that restore two is well, is what will push you to win those games. Yes, it's yeah. it's amazing. It's just like the best thing ever. And the double wolves funny. Just yeah. No healing today. Really good against Werner Herzog specifically. All right, so then Sunday they also had another 1K. This had only 24 players in it. Um Alex, what was the top 8? Uh well, first in Swiss was Sabine Green. Second one was a Bosk Green, 30 HP, so presumably this would be in green was ECL. Uh, you got Boba Yellow in third. You got a Mono Yellow Han in fourth. You got a Red Blue Han in fifth. You have a uh, Green ECL Bosk. We have no data on whoever came in seventh. And then you got another uh, Green Bosk ECL. It's interesting that all these Bosks are popping up here. I think it was a yellow, just so you know, I think it's yellow boba is that seventh play, the seventh seed one. Okay. Sure. Uh, the top four, you had um, mono yellow Han over Sabine and Bosco over boba yellow, which would make sense because that was the only one that wasn't stated. And then the finals, you had the mono yellow Han over Bosque. The mono yellow Han is literally exactly the same from the tournament we just went over, and presumably also the same person. That I don't know, but yeah, I I do. I how about this? I was told it was the same deck, 
but they did not tell me if it was the same person. But logically, it probably would be right. Like, I mean, yeah, like it's Baltimore, then Baltimore, then Baltimore, right? So, yeah, like, just go. Yeah, exactly. Like, if if you if you already won one tournament, why not buy an entry to the next one and say, okay, can I win another five hundred bucks? You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll yeah. just go through the uh, green thirty health based boss because we already went through the mono Han. And this is interesting. You have a triple uh, Bounty Hunter's Quarry, which is such a fantastic uh, bounty. Triple Timely Intervention, triple Ularin, double Force Choke, triple Price on Your Head, double Kylo's Tie Silencer for Cody. Not getting three in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, double Death Mark, which is also an incredible bounty. The draw two cards one. Yeah, triple Resupply, triple Phase Three Dark Trooper. Triple Super Laser Deck. Double uh, the Red Fang Fighter. I guess I can ask, I have to specify these things now. Mm -hmm. uh, triple Cell Block Guard. So a lot of Sentinel in there. One Tech. Yay! <laughs> I tech the Tech. Uh, double uh, Interceptor. Triple Overwhelming. Double Traitorous. Triple Vader. Triple Reinforcement. Triple Palpatine. And double Crate Dragon. Because you ramp a lot. And if you have Price on their head and Boss comes out... Ramp twice in one turn is disgusting. In the sideboard, they have Cody's triple, uh, the third silencer there. Uh, another Fang Fighter to make it three. Triple uh, the Black Sun Kirax Sentinel, presumably against like triple tech raid decks. Another tech, the third interceptor of Relentless, and a double Devastator. Uh, just for presumably longer games where you're just like, cool, I'm just going to drop a, a Devastator now. Sadly, yeah. only one Relentless, though. That thing just hoses very particular mm -hmm. decks, and it's awesome. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, they have, so if you look at it, they have what, six, seven, eight bounties in this deck? Eight bounties. I, and, and this is, it's funny because people, we were like, oh, there's no way that boss can do anything but this is this you know what this deck kind of feels like this kind of feels like the the um the pelp red deck that we had like it's just an insane let's 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 stop you for a couple of turns and then ramp and then yeah it's kind of like the um like green vader decks you were seeing towards the end of last um set yeah i'm not yeah i'm not sold on the um i'm not sold <laughs> that they need three of those timely interventions in there. But I mean, I guess it works really well with some of the stuff. So yeah, whatever, you know, Oh man, I run triple timely. It's so good. Just to, just to ambush out a, a reinforcement Walker. Like I'll keep yeah, one I mean, down and one in hand. And that just, just between yeah. those two is really, really strong. That, and they're that's not exactly what I was going to say is that, you know, the ability to smuggle out a uh, timely intervention um, does help, right? Because you don't, if you don't have the card that you need um, in hand and you don't want to like resource any one of your other units in there or bounty that will help out Bosk, just being able to smuggle out a timely intervention later on to get another uh, like larger unit down the line, like that's, it's totally worth it. Yeah. Can we replace Vader's for malls in this deck? Uh, you could no, it, no, let's let's be honest like like in this style of a deck is vader better because it can pull the sentinels or is it is is there not enough three drop units that vader makes as much of a difference i think i still rather have vader in this deck yeah yeah i mean just in general too but in this like the just pulling out the sentinels are you know huge and I guess like you can get a silencer or whatever if you sideboard the Black Sun Kirax. I've done that a lot with my Vaders. Uh, Grand, you know, you have a little bit less targets because like Ularin and the Fang Fighter aren't black units. Mm -hmm. uh, but just uh, it's the extra bodies, like that's what you're because you're giving up a lot of your early game. So Vader helps you put more bodies on the field for your late game, which is helping you catch up. Yeah. I like they include. Mr. Palpatine in there. Everybody's like, oh, oh, we shouldn't, whatever. But here we go. Here's here's an instance of Palpatine. I mean, there's more Palpatines in this deck than there is uh, crate Dragons. How about that? So, I mean, Palpatine just spreading out that six damage is so strong. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it's stronger in, in Palpatine because you can just do one damage to someone and steal it with Palpatine. But, uh, I mean, it just, it, it spades the units too, which is 
which is the really nice thing about that. Yeah. Except for lurking tie phantoms. All right. So we have here uh, again. We can thank what's it? What is his name? Is it Mitchell or is it Kyle? Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle. We can thank Kylo. Ky- Kylo. We, can we call him Kylo? Is that allowed? <laughs> you know what we should do? Do you know him like personally? Because he's he's from Michigan. I know he's from Michigan. Yeah, yeah. He's um. I've played him. He's he's really cool. Uh, he's a little bit further away from me. He plays like in uh, at the Eternals. Well, we should maybe we should reach out to him and ask if he wants to like join the podcast one of these nights because like he's he's put together like a lot of like really cool data stuff and like I'm a little jealous because that's like my thing. Um, so I love data and so I kind of want to I kind of want to see if he wants to maybe if he wants to join us. So like, but he put this chart together tonight and I stole it and it's amazing and props (laughs) props to him for this. You know, he's Um, a good dude. This is a this is a really good analysis. So this essentially is taking the um, one case that we talked about last weekend, the one and two case from this weekend. And then there was a German nationals qualifier that I did not know about that happened. And I apologize. Uh, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, so maybe. We, oh, did it? OK, well, I feel a little bit better than. OK, I still apologize because, you know, like, I mean, I, we could have tried to get some of the decks from it today, but um, maybe we'll, we'll talk about that next week. Um And uh, but anyway, he put together this thing and it's funny to kind of look at the spread. So obviously Boba Yellow is still making top cut. So it is making it is the highest top cut maker out of everything. And Boba Yellow did take down two tournaments. The scary thing is that Han Yellow, right? That Han Yellow took two top eights and took down two tournaments. So probability wise, that's probably a deck you're going to want to watch out for at Gen Con because people are going to try to swerve to that deck. I don't think that deck's as easy to play as people think it's going to be. Um, just personally, after I've played, I've played a lot of Han, um, and I don't think Han is the easiest. Old man Han is not the easiest leader to play. I don't know, Alex. What What are your thoughts on that? Well, I've basically played that deck. Like my deck is incredibly similar to that one. Is and it an easy deck to play? No, no, it's rough um, because it's not like ramping. You're not doing a traditional like Han Green ramp thing. It's more of like a mid range, like kind of control it and get your damage in when you can deck. Yeah. So that's crazy though, right? Like that's that it's it's one two events out of six. And... I also think that there's a surprise factor in that particular one too. I feel like the more people learn about the deck the significantly less um It'll impactful. Win. and what why do you think that i i, I guess let's, let's can we go down that path because like i i'm interested to know why why you feel that out of that that type of a deck uh, well, well once you see like a yellow han you're just like okay he's gonna be like probably ripping cards from my hand like it doesn't have a lot of end game things um your end game is just like try to get han and try to uh control from there which is you know a solid end game because the six ambush that does damage first is good but if you stall that deck out or if you have a lot of um like restore that deck just falters really fast Fair there's enough. no amount of like hand ripping you can do if you're not doing anything on the the board itself it, it starts losing to uh longer games i think the other very notable noticeable thing right is we don't have a uh, baby han like is making an appearance outside of that blue deck, right? Like, like people were saying Han green, you know, um, yes. The answer is yes. Sherman, um, Han green, <laughs> you know, like you, you, you old Han or young Han green, right. Is like red green is just better, like super good. And like, I played that deck and it's like, it's a good deck, but like, you're, we're not seeing it show up. So do you think it's because people aren't playing it or is it because it's not able to like Sabine green is just better like in the long run? I don't know. I've played my own version of that green, red Han. Uh, I think the one that was like very um, popular, it relied solely on ramping and ramping and ramping to uh, like great dragon that mm-hmm. like if you just don't draw a great dragon you're not ramping to anything like it doesn't have a lot of like mid units like mid uh mid cost units to like that are impactful enough on the board uh the one that i was playing has like gorilla attack pods in there 
which you can easy yell out for a lot of damage. And if you have, you know, 15 done to a base, they, they ready back up. It's real, real scary. There's a lot more like, um, I put a lot more smaller units in there. And also home one, which I'm not sure if that deck even has, but home one's really bonkers with that too. Yeah. Well, okay. Think about it too. Like when you ECL out that, that um, thing, if you do enough damage with it to hit that 15 mark, right? Like, then it re readies and it has mm -hmm. if, if and 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 you and it's it just sits there ready and you have to then take it off the board. You have to do six damage to that thing, or it's just gonna hit you again for another four. And if you have a way to add grit to it, like I mean, there's just like oh, it has grit. It natively has saying. grit, which yeah, is if scary. You, if you have a way, oh yeah, because you're ambushing it. Sorry, right? So you're yelling it out, so yeah. it's hitting even harder. Yeah, yeah. So you could take out a sentinel, and then all of a sudden now you're sitting here like here, Merry Christmas. I don't know. Like, oh, and yeah. same way as like if you, even if even if you use Han with it, right? You could bring that out turn five. Like even if it doesn't ready, you could bring that thing out turn five, and it's got grit on it, and it's it's now a six six for you know five cost. That's like yeah, really I've good. I've done that a lot. Like I think yeah. that's really good. I think that's like I don't know. Maybe it's just not better than Sabine Green. I guess there's been times where I get them like fifteen on their base, and I have five resources. I bring out Han, and I just drop the Gorilla Attack Pod. Han's ability, so now it's just swinging in for six, and they are, and it's already ready because I, I did fifteen to their base because I got really fast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I I play quite a bit of Red Han, and I agree, you have to be very very aggressive with Han to, um, to in order to compete with it. Um, you're you're going to be very grit heavy, um, so that way you can get the best benefit out of your units, um, and especially the um. Uh, the one that you just mentioned, uh, you know, just getting that 15 damage in so that way you can drop that six cost uh, in and just immediately deal damage right off the bat is such, such a big swing for Han. Um, I mean, I, I do like seeing Han green decks as, uh, that can ramp up with like resupply uh, on there just so that way they can get some of the larger units out there faster. Um, but it is... I find Red Han to be a little bit more easier than Yellow Han. Um, for when, sure, for sure. When you're playing it, because I think it's less of a, it, it's less of a, a gold rubric machine where you have to have like just the right things happening. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, I think there is just some, like, you just have to adjust some things in that red, green Han deck and it'll start doing better. But it's very like, railroad you're trying to ramp and then you're just trying to, to ramp some more try to get some value off poe try to get some value off wrecker and just ultimately drop the crate dragon and hope they just can't out it which is fair like they're a pain to out uh unless you just don't care like i do and i just drop a devastator and blow it out of the sky but you know you're eating 10 to your base that way I don't know. So I, I think I think the other interesting thing is, is people like we're not seeing Kylo in here, right? There's no Kylo. There's no Jabba, um, you know, and maybe Jabba just doesn't have as big of a place in this meta. We will see. Um, I know last time I got yelled at because I didn't I still haven't built a Jabba deck tech yet. I have a <laughs> Jabba deck I'm playing in fairness. So maybe I should just do a tech. I just haven't had the time to test it like I have. I don't know, is some of the other decks I've been playing. I just I've been playing a lot of other decks and like I typically have not done a deck tech unless it's something I've really like really, really played, you know. Um but there's no Kylo in here. There's oh, no Kylo. Kylo. Stonewall. Like if he like doesn't just win on like turn three, you're win. Like you just stop him. Yeah, um, so so do you think is that do you think the same thing like I don't think we expected to see a Lando in here, right? Like I think Lando and Fennec were like, it's like, okay, we can understand why some of those might not be in here, but like, I kind of thought Kylo would have made a little bit of a comeback per se, but now according to like some of this, like people aren't even like playing some of that. I don't know. We also oh. haven't seen a Boba blue outside of that one deck do something. And which is crazy. To me if you're as playing well. Kylo and you got a field of like mono yellow Bobas and mono yellow Hans yes. in front of you, that's yeah. you're not getting through that. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that it, um, especially for like the, the Kylo decks that rely on discarding cards from their hand, 
um, they they have a really tough time against yellow decks because uh, Waylay. I mean, number one reason, right? You're, you're discarding a your card and sh hopefully getting a benefit from it, and then it gets waylaid right back into your hand. And sh now, if you deployed your your Kylo, uh, you're getting less attack out of a Kylo. I mean, he already has low enough health as is. Uh, so uh, unless you can like put out more units and your opponent can like exhaust or take care of, uh, it becomes uh, a very hard uphill battle uh, for it. I know in my practices against Kylo decks, they tend to have that same issue where that sometimes a, a bad hand, um, even in or a mulligan into another bad hand, uh, really hurts them early on because they'll have a lot of high costed cards. Um, and by high, they're probably like four or five, but that early um, delay for them to get their their Kylo going um, just just messes them up for the rest of the game. Um, so Kylo probably will get better down the line as they develop more of that discard effect for yourself, discard effects for yourself um, down the line. Uh, either that, or you go with a lot of very cheap units across the board, and you know just try to play a lot more aggressive that way. Um, but a, a Kylo right now is having a hard time. Do we get to call him the IG eighty eight of this set? Is that like is it yeah. is it, is, it <laughs> is he like the one that those promise that just that do anything? Personally, I have an easier time with IG than I do with Kylo. So but yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah, uh with raid. Um I like I go very heavy with uh with raid and you can have some really big attacks with IG, but uh Kylo just he's he's in a rough spot right now. So yeah. A lot of my locals are playing Kylo. It's fine. Like you just, it's an aggro deck. You just have to learn to, how to deal with it. If you have some sentinels and an idea of what to do, you should be able to do decently well. Sometimes you can get blown out. Sometimes you don't. All right. Any other revelations that we kind of see in here? I think for the most part, like what we predicted would be good outside of boss. Be boss has done a little bit better, I think. Uh, than we had originally kind of stated, but we, we what did we rate Boss at? Did we put him almost like a B plus or something like that? Sounds about right. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't remember, but like the the red green Boss decks are just red green Vader, but Boss comes out earlier and you have some bounties. <laughs> like they're they're just like your standard old school red green ramp to end game decks. So it's nothing like um, surprising that they're having success because that was successful in the first set. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to cover about this? I'm very curious about Palpatine Green. You're very curious about Palpatine Green? Yeah, I just want to see what other people are running to. Because, you know... I'm not sure. I mean, you didn't base your health green deck off anything, right? We just came up with ours. Yeah, we, we, we've had ours for as long as that guy had his. So, like, yeah, like Mickey, he did a deck tech. I don't know. I don't have a link for it. I know he posted it somewhere. But, yeah, I, we had I, we had ours before. Um, <laughs> But we've been playing Pelp. He, I guess he's been playing Pelp also. And I think all these other people are taking ideas from from that deck and using it. So, yeah, but Palpatine's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I will say, like, I don't know, like, I think it's good and bad. Like, I don't like a Palpatine mirror. I will tell you that that is that is the <laughs> one thing that is not super fun because it's it's going to be it's, it's always who's going to flip their Palpatine first. That's that's literally what it is. It's like, all right, are you going to flip it to steal this so you can flip back and steal it? And like I've literally played mirror matches where I've just never flipped my Palpatine and they never flip theirs because like <laughs> we just know that we're going to just do it and flip and steal back. You know, uh, I played against a um, red green Vader on Friday with this oh, my green Palp deck, and I didn't flip Palp. I didn't need to, <laughs> just <Yes>. one. <laughs> yeah. But also, I think I ramped like three times, possibly four. So I just like dropped a Devastator when he brought out Vader, which is just <laughs> rough. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think the reason a lot of the pelt decks that we've seen like we're struggling against the the Han Greens and things like that is because they have that DJ tech combo, and if they can ramp faster than you can ramp, and they get that DJ off beforehand, it stops your pelt ramp um, a little bit faster. And so, like, 
I don't think in the end game. I, I don't know. Like I have not personally had an issue. I've had more of an issue with Mando yellow than I had with um, the, the Han yellow personally, but, and we haven't seen young Han yellow yet either. Right. Like that's not been a thing. And we haven't seen Sabine yellow. Like that's the other odd thing we're not seeing here. And maybe it's just because it's a limited number of tournaments, but we're not seeing yellow Sabine all of a sudden. We're seeing this green Sabine resurgence. I'm kind of I'm kind of waiting for that yellow Sabine resurgence to come about because yellow Sabine had more of a toolbox um approach to some of these decks than that green Sabine did. I have locals that are still playing like yellow Sabine and have been updating it, which is yeah. cool. I just think that that's like, I don't know. I guess I don't know if they didn't get enough yellow cards, but like to me, that just seems like yellow Sabine was having a better go at green Sabine when they were playing. So um, I don't know. I think it's interesting. So, oh man, uh, I, just, I still feel bad for that game against the red green Vader. He had to kill my relentless by playing three open fire back to back to back. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, well, I'm sorry, Robert, but you know, you have nine resources, and he's like, open fire, open fire, open fire. And I'm like, I saw my devastator. <laughs> I'm dropping that. Like felt like a kind of a moment, right? More, <laughs> more. So, like, but didn't the first one do nothing? Right. But Relentless only has eight health, right? So we just uh, he had to play the, the back to back open see. fire to do it. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's I'm surprised awful. he kept all three of them in his hand just, right. just waiting for it. <laughs> all he did was kill a, a relentless that turn, and I'm like, well, I saw him with a devastator and dropped like four units or something absurd like that, and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> all right. All right.